maybe 10% of the AP microeconomics test would be over uh, public goods. So public goods are goods that are non-rival and non-excludable. Those are the two characteristics. What does that mean? Non-rival. One person's consumption of the product does not diminish someone else's enjoyment of the product. So if I use it, it doesn't diminish um, the enjoyment that you get out of consuming that same product. Non-excludable. You can't bar anybody else from using the product. I can't stop you from using that product. So some examples of public goods based on that definition. Uh, national defense. So it's non-rival, non-excludable. If you get the um, benefits of public defense, uh, doesn't mean um, that I can't also have the benefits. And I can't stop you from enjoying the benefits of, of national defense. A fireworks display. If I get to enjoy the fireworks display, you get to enjoy it just as much. Doesn't mean that your enjoyment of it is diminished because I'm also viewing it. And I can't stop you from seeing it unless I come up to you and cover your eyes. So that doesn't really make much sense. A park might not be the exact best one. And same with a public road. It might not be a perfect example. Because if everyone is using the park, lots of people are using public roads, it might diminish um, the enjoyment that you get from it. But maybe still public goods, just maybe not the best example. The problem with public goods is that they're often underproduced or sometimes they're not produced at all. We also have a free rider problem, meaning that sometimes they're overused or sometimes they're misused because it doesn't really belong to anybody. I guess it just belongs to the community. So to um, sort of solve this problem um, of the free rider problem, often government will collect taxes to pay for these um, public goods. So the government collects taxes and then they pay for things like national defense or maybe a fireworks display or a public park or a public road.